The MCU has come a long way in the last few years, and not all of it good, but I thought it'd be fun if we went back and looked at one of the best movies in the entire saga, Infinity War, through the lens of the villain, Mr. I abducted two daughters, turned one into a cyborg, and chucked the other one off a cliff. The mad titan, Thanos. Now, think about it like this. You are Thanos. You are the mad titan hell-bent on saving the universe from itself, because frankly, no one has the will to do it other than you, and no one really thinks it's a good idea, but you know it's a good idea. You learn over the years that overpopulation is the number one killer. And as such, you turned yourself into a natural disaster. If the natural disaster had a grizzled testicle chin and really small eyes for its face. The year is 2012 by the human calendar. And as such, you are looking to fulfill those old religious prophecies written by some people in the jungle a couple thousand years ago while also picking up the Tesseract, something you know to be an infinity stone that's somehow hidden away on Earth. But you don't want to get your hands dirty, you know, you gotta leave it up to someone else to do it. So you send Loki. He knows about Earth, he is as guardian from all intents and purposes. Those guys are some Earth people's gods, which is kinda kinda handy. But for him to accomplish this task and also kind of fulfill the idea of him being a trickster, you give him a staff called the Mind Scepter. Now, how this thing functions, you don't know, but you give it to him anyway because you think it's gonna help. But you set him to work and you put a minion on the planet to wait for some updates every now and again. My lord, it appears that Loki has had some problems on Earth. <sighs> okay, what kind of trouble? Well, it appears that Loki's brother was also there defending Earth, and there was a guy in a metal suit they called Iron Man, a big green monster, and some other lesser humans, one wearing bright blue spandex, uh, one shooting a bow and arrow, and the other one was just a woman in a black suit. But they managed to take down your Chitori army. Hang on. A guy in an iron suit? Like, are we fighting against, like, medieval people or something? Like, what is that? Oh, oh no, that's just the name, my lord. I, I believe he's called Tony Stark, but it's not actually made of iron, it's made of titanium or something or other. Either way, very formidable foe, you should be most careful. And what about Loki? Well, it appears that he was captured and taken to Asgard. And the Tesseract? Gone, my lord. <sighs> Do they know what the Tesseract is? Uh, unlikely, but who's to be sure? And what about the Scepter? Like, you know, that was a pretty powerful object. I would like that back. Uh, gone also, my lord. Uh, thank god that was just a powerful trinket and not an Infinity Stone, otherwise I would have been... Most upset? Jesus. So you take a step back and you keep using your proxies. Another one Ronan had word on the Power Stone. But interestingly, your daughter Gamora has run off somewhere because of this dickhead. But at least you have faith that Ronan, he will find the Power Stone and bring it to you. My lord, I have news about Ronan. I'm guessing good news, I hope. I mean, Ronan's supposed to be a pretty you know, pretty strong guy, like all things considered. And what was he doing? He was going to Xandar or Morag? Not exactly like, you know, heavily fortified or defended planets. Like, I can't imagine there'd be anything that happened that would be of dire consequence here. Well, my lord, it appears that he was corrupted by the Power Stone and thought he could use it to take over the universe himself. And he nearly destroyed Xander in the process. Oh, you know what they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But nah, that's not very good news, is it? No, my lord, it appears that he was beaten by... A dance-off to save the universe. Uh, a, a, a what now? Uh, a dance-off to save the universe. Uh, uh, it's where you move your body in time with music. Next you're gonna tell me there was singing involved, like it's like some kind of like karaoke. Uh, yes, it appears that there was some singing involved as well. Bloody hell, okay. Well, what happened with the stone? Uh, before I answer that, I must continue. Uh, it appears that a human picked up the stone and Gamora helped him. Gamora was there? What the f***? Yes, my lord. Well, why didn't you answer with that? I'm sure she's bringing the stone back right now. 
thank god my daughter truly is the only person i can rely on isn't she jeez uh my lord you dare interrupt me minion i will end you my lord your daughter left with the human what Yes, my lord, it appears that she's in the wind again. Okay, well, she must have an angle. I can't imagine she'd betray me when we're this close to winning. It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> she just left me with Nebula again, didn't she? Oh, god damn it, man. Also, my lord, I've, I, I have some news regarding Earth. Well, it's about the Mind Stone. The Mind Stone? On Earth. Yes, my lord. Um, that Tony Stark guy built a robot who went rogue and then found out the, the mind scepter was the mind stone. Uh, and then he used that to create another robot that uses the mind stone in its head. You're telling me that we had the mind stone in our possession the entire time. It was in the mind scepter. We gave it to goddamn Loki, who then lost with a literal infinity stone to a couple of humans and a and a and his brother when we could have just had the mind scepter all to ourselves and had the stone did no one think to check what the mind scepter was all about or did we just all collectively forget that it existed uh it seems so my lord yes well shit looks like i gotta go and do all of this myself then don't i you try and use proxies and everyone just falls apart around you, don't they? You even got a fancy new gauntlet from some giant dwarf, so you're feeling pretty inevitable. So you say the Tesseract is on Asgard? Ooh, about Asgard, my lord. Oh, fuck. No, what now? We believe the Asgard was destroyed by the Ragnarok, and now their population is currently on a spaceship floating in space. Uh, space. But we also have word that the time stone is on Earth as well. The time stone is on Earth as well? How many infinity stones does this one goddamn planet have? You're telling me that at one point in time they had three infinity stones on that goddamn planet? That is ridiculous, by the way. How do you... Okay. Whatever. But there's still two on Earth. It's fine. That makes things a little bit easier for us. We can... Okay. I'll swing by Xander, I'll get the Power Stone, and then I'll go and get the Tesseract from the Asgardians, and then we'll get the Reality Stone after that. Bish bash bosh, we're all good to go. Quite right, my lord, that sounds like a good plan. There's reports of Odin and Hela's disappearance. Odin is gone? Oh, thank god, man, like, I, I was beginning to think I would have to fight the two of them. That would have been quite challenging. First things first, you go to Xander, you conquer it in a heartbeat, you do it completely off screen, doesn't even doesn't even make you sweat and you just think to yourself like why didn't i just do this from the start why did i rely on proxies but whatever we all learn from our mistakes all that matters is that you've done it now and you're in control and that now no one's gonna stop you so you manage to locate and find the ship again completely off screen take care of the entirety of the asgardian population or at least like you think it's most of it you you don't know if there are other asgardians floating around nearby or whatever and then you're just left with loki and thor who Put up a little bit of a fight, but let's be real, you've got them on the ropes. So you start off with something, something, destiny arriving all the same, doesn't matter, like you just don't really care about what you're saying, you just want to maintain your image as a big, ominous bad guy, and you know, like you like the sound of your own voice. So you start talking to them, look, look, boys, I know you got the Tesseract, just hand it over, I've won you've lost. The buff blonde guy says, we don't have it. It was destroyed on Asgard. Did you not see my planet explode? Come on, Thor. You know I'm not that stupid. You got your slimy little weasel of a brother over there. I know he's got something going on in his mind. All right, Mr. Loki, your choice. Either you give me the stone or I kill your brother. And Loki's just weighing up his options and you know he's thinking, hmm, powerful stone or brother. All right, kill my brother, please. All right, bro. So you start killing his brother. Hey, the guilt is weighing on him, and you're like, "Wow, Loki's actually a bit pathetic, isn't he?" Jesus Christ! If I'd known it was all about emotions, I would have done this a long time ago. And then he, you know, after you've cooked his brother for a little bit, he goes, "Wait, actually, oh, Loki, man, you really have done it this time." Haven't you? And Loki, he saunters up to you, giving you some sanctimonious speech about the sun will rise on you, something. I don't know. You don't know, like. Come on, man, like, just give me the goddamn stone, that's all that matters. But as you're paying attention to how wonderful you are, something sucker punches you from behind and you see a big green thing. Oh, was that the big green thing that they were talking about on Earth? Anyway, no, he wants to have a quick 1v1 and you are completely happy to oblige. You throw that thing down and can't help but think 
how in the hell did Loki lose this thing? Like, wasn't this meant to be the embodiment of rage? You know, a creature that could hold planets together and, like, had unlimited power and strength. Man, they really did nerf it, didn't they? And for your trouble, the Rainbow Warrior sends him on his way back to Earth and you just, okay, well, whatever, it doesn't matter that much, like, he's just a big green guy. It's mildly inconvenient, but you skewer the guy that did it and you get back to dealing with the stone. Your minion comes up to you and he hands you the stone. My lord, nobody has ever had the might, nay, the nobility of having two stones. Why, thank you, minion. I will happily accept those treasures as my own. And you put the stone in your gauntlet and the sheer power is overwhelming. It's, it's almost like squeezing a bit of lemon juice into your mouth after you've been playing with a rope for the last five minutes. And then Loki does his usual thing, tries to double cross you, you snap his neck, you know, whatever, it's whatever, just why are these people just so tedious, can they just not accept the fact that you're going to win already, like, come on. So you talk to your minion, you, like, you guys go to Earth, I'm gonna go and get the reality stone, yeah, Earth should not be a problem for you guys now, the, the, the brother is here, you shouldn't lose, okay, we have the, the Asgardian god, there is no other insanely powerful being on that planet so you can't lose all right taken care of just for you yes my lord quite right you go to the collector and he doesn't put up a fight he just hands you the stone straight away and that's when you get a uh, incoming transmission from your minion my lord our forces has failed on earth fuck me what happened don't tell me it was another dance off please no my lord we were defeated by a woman with red magic but we failed in capturing the Mind Stone, but we have the Time Stone and we are on our way to Titan now. We will meet you there. I will see you on Titan shortly. Gamora's just arrived with her new boyfriend. I'm going to go greet them. So you warp the reality around you and you create an illusion that Gamora can fall for to see if she still cares about you. And behind her, you see her new group of friends. And frankly, you don't know if you're a little bit disappointed. They are quite the eclectic bunch even worse is that her boyfriend is a human a regular human and that's a bit disappointing you know Gamora deserves better she deserves the best in this world and you just watch on as Gamora kills your other version of yourself and you're just like wow she actually did it she actually managed to do it but she's crying about it as well wow she really did care about me so you appear in front of the all right daughter sorry about that I just had to see if you still cared you know uh nothing personal um Good, good to know, but yeah. And then some buff dude with some crazy tattoos jumps out. Thanos! Okay, fair enough. So you just turn him into clay? Rocks? I don't know, but you make him useless. And then another one, this girl with freaky antenna on, you turn her into spaghetti, leaving you just with Gomorrah and her boyfriend. Pulls you out. Grimace. What the, what the fuck is a grimace, by the way, bro? I have no concept of what that is. But anyway, you, you don't want to miss out on your pleasantries. Oh, you must be the boyfriend. Hi, I'm Thanos. Nice to meet you. Look, I think we're a bit beyond you having her back at nine. But I'm not her boyfriend. I'm her long-term monogamous booty call that's going to kill you. You, you. you almost chuckled yourself. Okay, bro, you have, I, I respect your testicles right now. And Gamora is just... just looking at him with pleading eyes not him oh gamora you want him to kill you so i don't get the information i need okay well do it do it now and you watch as he desperately tries to not pull that trigger and just you know building up the courage to do that is an impressive feat you couldn't imagine having to kill your own your own lover and he pulls the trigger of all things he actually does it what a what an absolute legend but anyway you turn the the bullets into bubbles because why not right why not fuck with him a little bit it's just par for the course at this point sorry chum but i like it i like your style i like what you're all about but i have business elsewhere so you you take gamora away and you end up in your throne room you're just like look daughter i really thought you were gonna you know take this from me i thought you were gonna be my heiress like how could you do this to me? I gave you everything. I taught you everything. You took me from my planet. You killed half of my people. And you think I want to follow you? 
Yeah, but like since I did that, people on your planet have like had a much better life. There's blue skies, people have got enough food. Well, yeah, for now it's one generation, isn't it? What about in a couple of generations when the population bounces back? What are you going to do then? Well, uh, it doesn't matter about them because I'll have my stones and then I'll be able to snap my fingers and kill 50% of everyone whenever I want to. Oh, so my planet just loses another 50% of its population. Why don't you just go and kill them all right now? Like, what, you're going to just somehow spare my planet from your snap? You're going to have that level of consciousness when you're dealing with trillions of people that you're not just going to wipe out my entire planet? But it'll be merciful. You, they, they won't feel pain. And anyway, th this plan is working. I've seen it work. I saw it on your planet. This is going to save the universe. How dare you? It's just rude. It's not going to change anything. It's short sighted and it's fucking stupid. I cannot believe it. My god. It's like you fetishize death. Look, just tell me where the soul stone is. Okay. I don't know where the soul stone is, Thanos. Like, what the fuck? <sighs> really? Okay. Come with me. i got something to show you. You know, I picked this up uh, not long ago, back when it tried to kill me, so... You're in for a treat. You show her nebula and for God, like, for God's sake, man, like, uh, if you're gonna try and kill somebody, kill them or don't get caught. Did you teach them nothing? Look, Gamora, I'm going to kill Nebula if you don't tell me where the stone is. I, d I don't know where the stone is. Oh my God, okay, whatever. So yeah. So you press play on the memory recording of Nebula and it basically says, that she burnt the map to the soul stone. I just caught you lying in 4K. Tell me where the stone is or I kill your sister. <sighs> it's on Vormir. See, I knew you were lying. Like I taught you everything in this world. One thing I didn't teach you was how to goddamn lie. And that's why you're so bad at it. Jesus. Anyway, let's go. So you go to Vormir and you meet a guy with an exceptionally red head and he must have died from embarrassment or something because he carried over onto his skull. Oi, uh, Mr. Redface, where's this soul stone at then? The soul stone lies in front of you, but be careful what you wish for because the price does not come easy and blah, 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 blah. You don't pay attention to anything you say and until he says, you must lose that which you love. You must trade a soul for a soul. A soul for a soul? What kind of riddle was that? Stop talking in tongues, man. Just spell it out for me. Crikey. You need to lose that which you love. What do I love? Pod racing, mojitos, and your daughter's old oh, uh, daughter. Wait, I have to kill my daughter, don't I? Oh, thank God. Oh, why couldn't it be the other one? Seriously? I have to kill this one? Oh, my God. Fine. Whatever. But you see Gamora laughing. Laughing? Huh? It's not fair. Oh, that's just a brilliant thing to happen, isn't it? You are incapable of loving. You asked the universe for a prize and it told you no. How can you give up anything if you've never loved? Wait, does this become a psychopath or something? So you start crying a little bit because like you're not a psychopath. You're a little bit morbid, sure, a bit masochistic, why not? But psychopath, come on, that's a step too far. Come on. It's not as if like you fetishize death and you're trying to do this to create some kind of romantic relationship with it and like bump uglies with the death deity. Like, come on, that's crazy. You're doing this for the betterment of the universe, not some twisted love fantasy. That's not psychopathic, that's just doing what's right. Really? You're crying. It's not for him. No, this is not love. It's not love. So she tries to stab herself and you turn that thing into bubble. And you, you know, it does break your heart that you have to kill this daughter and not the other one. The other one would have been so much better. Like, Jesus Christ, man. But you roll with the punches and you toss her off the cliff. It breaks your heart. You do love this person. Like, despite everything, you really wanted the best for her. You really wanted her to take over your kingdom. She was the perfect child to have. But you know, you gave up your destiny once and you can't give it up again, not even for her. And you say that as you chuck her off a cliff. But destiny must be fulfilled and it arrives all the same. And well, she did indirectly call you a psychopath, so... Meh! You can't feel too heartbroken about it. Next thing you know, you've got another shiny glowing rock and you're like okay one step closer to the edge now it's about to break so you teleport to titan hoping to meet your minion there and you arrive and the guy with the time stone is there mr cheekbones himself dr weird dr flamboyant eh, who knows nice to see you sir i'm guessing my minion is dead yes well at least he brought you here but my god God, today's a bad day, isn't it? Jesus Christ, like, how could this get worse? And, you know, the, the guy looks like he's ready 
to throw down. And you're happy to oblige because, you know, you've just lost your daughter. You just found out your best minion is dead. You want to test out your fancy new glowing stones. And you want to outlet some of your frustration. So it's a perfect opportunity. And, you know, you're not going to lose to one measly human, are you? Well, it turns out it wasn't just a 1v1. A bunch of guys start coming out of the woodwork. And one of them is Tony Stark. And also, Gamora's, like, ex-boyfriend. Is it ex-boyfriend? Is it dead? Or is it just, like... Anyway, Gamora's previous boyfriend is also there. And somehow, all of these people fight together. Like, they've been fighting together for years. But you know that they were only here, like, 20 minutes ago. So how did they learn to fight like this in 20 minutes? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Even Nebula shows up and is somehow in on the act. Action. like what is going on but she ends up just hitting you a couple times and she's practically useless and that's why you wanted to kill her and not Gamora they get the upper hand on you and then the girl with the antenna sits on top of your head and sends you to sleep and they find out that you know you chucked Gamora off of a cliff and that pisses off her ex-boyfriend beyond measure and you know he actually breaks the spell for you, allowing you to come back completely, take the fight on your own, and then you throw a moon at Tony Stark, because, you know, why not, right? And that just leaves you with the magician. And you find out the magician doesn't have the time stone in his little magic pendant thing. It's somewhere else, but whatever. But then Tony Stark comes back, apparently throwing a literal moon at him is not enough to kill him when he is just a human. Whatever. You got the medieval knight like a fish. Wait. What is it, cheekbones? I'm a little busy right now. If you spare his life, I'll give you the stone. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's a pretty sweet deal. Hand it over then. And he plucks that stone from a star. And you're like, wow. Hey, man, um, I've got two daughters. Do you want to come and do their... I've got one daughter. Do you want to come and do her birthday party one year? That would be really cool. Kids love magicians. And with the time stone in hand, you teleport to Earth. And what a magical convenience. You can teleport to the exact point that you need to be in this infinite universe but you know the plot needs to move along and you know you are kind of like chosen by the gods to make sure this all happens it's kind of ironic that the stone that you had at the start ends up being the last one that you can get mm. but not two seconds after you come through the portal do people start attacking you a guy with wings and a guy in a big metal suit even the guy that was supposed to be wearing spandex and he's wearing like a normal costume this time whatever like you you hand you deal with them pretty easily although the guy that was historically in spandex did actually put up a little bit of a fight and you're quite impressed that he almost stops you from closing your hands but it doesn't matter because you watch in front of you as the girl with the red magic blows up the head of the guy with the stone and blows the stone into smithereens and you're like oh well that's cute that you thought that would work i mean maybe if i didn't have the time stone you turn the clock back guy comes out and you pluck that from his head just as you're about to snap your fingers and why does it have to be a snap why can't it just be like a willing does it have to be like a physical motion like what the hell and i mean have you ever tried to snap a gauntlet made of metal it's impossible like why okay whatever just as you're about to snap your fingers an axe comes down from the sky and you're just like bloody hell next thing you know you've got it in your chest and the big buff blonde dude is there in front of you and he's like i told you you'd die and you process the trauma of having a giant axe in your chest and you tell him man like should aim for the head and you snap your fingers and you disappear into a portal you're greeted by young gamora and you look at her and you just say look how long until your birthday? I just found a fantastic wizard up on Titan. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a like. And also tell me which villain do you want to be covered in a future video? And so, you know, subscribe for that as well if you want to see more perspectives of villains and maybe some other interesting creatures. But anyway, I just want to shout out my members real quick, especially Lavender and Alan. Yeah, have a great day and have a great life.